Well, you're not imagining things. I am planting a vegetable garden here in November, and what I'm putting out is radish seeds. And you'll notice that to take up all the space here, I'm just scattering them on top of the ground. Now, we got a nice heavy rain just really a couple of days ago. And with radish seed, you need to plant them about a half inch deep. So instead of disturbing this heavy, compacted soil, what I'm going to do is just cover it with some compost. And again, we're going to hopefully get some good uh, stands there. And we're just going to cover it with compost about a half inch and we'll level that out and water it in, of course. And then once the radish seed starts to come up and we keep it watered, it'll pack it down a little bit more, but we'll thin it out as we need to. Now with this particular variety, it is only gonna take about 25 days to harvest the radish seeds. And really, radish will take some cold temperatures and you know it doesn't um, really have to have too much warm weather at all and sometimes during Christmas time even we get some warm spells. So we're going to be able to plant radishes today and mustard. Now you can really, if you're a diehard gardener, grow vegetables really year round in Oklahoma. And really the best way to accomplish that is with the aid of a cold frame. And I want to show you a little kit today that we found that we're going to go ahead and put in some lettuce and spinach and other things and grow them in this bed under a cold frame. And we found a little kit here called an Easy Up. And really what it is, it's just, it's not any of the lumber, it's just plastic angles that you can use. For, and it, well, I call it a no-brainer kit, especially for someone like me that has a little bit of trouble with carpentry work. And what you do is you just slide in two by two lumber into these plastic ends and it gives you your angles and you can frame it in no time. And there's different sizes for the base and the different angles. And again, that's what we're using here. And let me show you a little bit closer what we've done to construct our cold frame. Inside here, you'll see two of the angle ones that are actually gonna be the top of our cold frame. And then we've used the two by twos. And Alan, of course, uh, our handyman has constructed this. And he's just nailed the base at the bottom without using the plastic one. So we have some extras to use later on in some other cold frames. Then with our plastic, He's just taken a lath, a piece of lath, and with the excess plastic, rolled it under, so to speak, and attached that right there on this piece of lumber with the nail. And that's what you see sticking out that we're getting ready to bend. So it's pretty sturdy, and it's kind of cumbersome and long to fit the bed. So I'm going to have one of our volunteer Oklahoma Gardening Ambassadors, Don Banks, help me flip this over to kind of show you what it will look like over the raised bed. and you'll see it fits on there pretty nicely. Now, if you're familiar with cold frames, the purpose of it is to kind of trap in the sunlight from the heat and different things, and also the heat from the soil, and then keep the plants from freezing. Well, it never fails during the winter months. We get a bright, sunny day, and it can also heat up too much and kill the plants and cook them. With this one, usually there are vents to raise and open, and it's not easy to do. On a real hot day, we would probably just roll it over like we just demonstrated. But on a day that you don't really want to take it off, we've decided that we're just going to set it up on some bricks or concrete blocks so the heat then would escape out of the bottom and still hold enough in to kind of keep it from freezing. And then at night, we'll just pop those off and let it sit right flush on the ground. Now the nice thing about this one, it's wide enough, it keeps the heat again from the soil close to the plants. We're not growing tall plants. And you can see the angles that we have again is keeping it nice and close where to hold more heat. So we're going to be real pleased with this, I think. Plus, we really don't have to permanently attach it. And I think the winds and everything, it's going to keep from blowing. The only thing we're concerned about is snowfall on the top. And we'd have to come out and brush that off. Now this kit is really interesting because you can use it interchanging different things. We recently tried it to construct a hobby greenhouse and Alan helped out with that too. And the hobby greenhouse, again, we're using the same plastic yeah. angling from the Easy Up. We made a greenhouse that's six by eight, six feet wide, eight feet long, and a little over seven feet tall. We used plastic again, we used three and a half mil Four mil would be better, but for the width of the greenhouse, we can only find it wide enough in a three and a half mil so we didn't have to do a lot of cutting. 
We use a lath again to roll the plastic to attach it to the frame. We'll be putting in some benches and landscape weed barrier on the ground to keep the Bermuda grass from growing inside, setting the plants on it. And then we'll just be heating it with an electric ceramic heater that's thermostat controlled and also a heat lamp should provide enough heat in there to keep those plants going through the winter time. So again, the kit is really pretty inexpensive just for the plastic. The lumber, depending on the grade and where you purchase it, could be a little bit more costly, but it's very simple and really very versatile and really makes those angles a lot easier when constructing any kind of hobby type project for your garden or landscape. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge, both classic and contemporary.